Okay, for problem number one, it says Jay's bank account was negative $42 and then it increased to $12. Which of the following equations represents the change in his a bank account? Uh, what do you think, Vincent? C. C. So starting at negative 42, then it increased until it got to $12. So when it says it increased to, it doesn't see it increased by. So a lot of people would probably think, oh, I'm going to take my bank account and add 12 to it. But it says it increased up to $12, not by $12. So it means you're starting at negative 42, you're increasing it until you get to $12. So that's going to be answer choice C. Answer choice C. Okay, problem number two, we're going to solve. We've got 18.3 is equal to x minus 4. Who can remind us what do we have to do in order to be able to solve this? What do we have to do? You guys just took a test on this. Come on, guys. What do you need to do? Oh. <coughs> add. What are we going to add to both sides? Four. four. We're going to add four because we're going to identify that constant. That constant is at minus four, so instead we're going to add four to both sides. Those fours are going to cancel out, and we're going to get that x is going to be equal to 22.3. x is equal to 22.3. For problem number three, we have negative 6x is equal to 5. What do we do to solve? Divide. And what do we want to divide both sides by? Negative 6. We're going to divide by negative 6 on this side, which will cancel these out, and we'll divide by negative 6 on this side. Now, there's two ways that we could represent our answer. We could represent it as a fraction, negative 5 over 6, or we could represent it as a decimal, negative 0 point, I think it's like 8, 3 repeated. Okay. Either one of those would be acceptable answers, but you need to know how to write them as both formats, either as a fraction or as a decimal. Okay, number four, triangle has angle measures of 6x minus 3, 2x, and 4x plus 1. We want the sum of the angles. What does it mean by sum? When we say we're taking the sum of the angles, what operation is sum? Eileen? Addition, that means that we're going to add. So we're going to take each of these angles. We're going to take 6x minus 3, <coughs> and we're going to add 2x, and then we're going to add 4x plus 1. Does it tell us that it's set equal to anything? No, so it's just an expression that we're going to simplify. We need to combine our like terms first. Our like terms... We have 6x, we have a positive 2x, and we have a positive 4x. What is 6x plus 2x plus 4x going to give us? 12x. 12x. Okay, then we have our constants. Our constants are negative 3 and a positive 1. What is negative 3? plus 1, negative 2. So there is our simplified expression. When we add the angles together, when we take the sum, we're going to get 12x minus 2. Okay, 12x minus 2. All right, and then for our last problem, we need to simplify. What do we need to do first? What's the very first thing that we're supposed to do in a problem like this? Christopher? distribute. We're supposed to distribute. Now there's two things that we can distribute here. There are two values that we can distribute. The first value that we need to distribute is the value right here. What value is this? One. Not one. Negative one. Negative one. That is a negative one that needs to be distributed to the x and to the 9. So we're going to do negative one times 1x one and we're going to do negative one times a positive 9. Negative 1 times 1x is a negative 1x. <coughs> negative 1 times 9 is going to be a negative 9. We also have, I'll do it in pink, we also have this negative 3. That negative 3 needs to be distributed to the 2x and to the minus 5. So we're going to do negative 3 times 2x and negative 3 times negative 5. Notice I'm including that minus sign for the 5. Negative 3 times 2x is going to give us negative 6x. 
negative 3 times negative 5 gives us a positive 15. Okay, so now we have this. We can focus on combining those like terms. We need to combine the negative 1x and the negative 6x. Negative 1x and a negative 6x is going to give us a negative 7x. And then we've got a negative 9 and a positive 15. A negative 9 plus 15 is going to give us a positive 6. And there's our simplified answer. Once we've distributed and combined like terms, there's our simplified expression. <clears throat> On Friday, you guys are going to be taking two CFAs. Because unit 2 has been split up into multiple sections, but they did them in different orders. So they did equations first, and then they did expressions. We did expressions first, and then equations. So that's why you're going to be taking back-to-back -back CFAs. Your warm-ups today, and your warm-up on Wednesday, and your warm-up on Thursday, and your warm-up on Friday are to help prepare you for those CFAs. You guys did perfectly fine on your tests. Now we just want to get you finished off with those CFAs, and we'll move on. Yes? For your digital day, you have IXLs that you'll be doing on our new unit, which is on inequalities. Okay, so go ahead and turn your paper over to the back. So for today, <coughs> for today, it's very, very simple process. Oops, sorry. Not right now. Today is a very simple process. We are just going over what you have already learned previously, which was inequality terms, okay, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to. We're going over those terminologies today and then how to graph our inequalities. So none of the information that you're learning today is brand new. Everything that you've learned in sixth grade is what we're going to be covering for the basic idea of today. Okay, um, with this unit, there is a lot of vocabulary that you need to make sure that you understand. So each one of these terms, each one of these terms has multiple different ways of expressing them. And that's what we're going to be discussing for today. So the term less than, and you really want to make sure that you have all of these terms written down. We've got values like, obviously we know is less than, that's the one that's the most common that we say. We also say the term is fewer than, shh, quiet, we use the term is fewer than, is smaller than. is under and is below. These are terms that we commonly use when we are express, expressing the term less than. Okay, when we use the term greater than, obviously we use is greater than. <coughs> so x is greater than a value. Um, is more than, so think opposite of what fewer than, fewer than, more than. What's the opposite of smaller? Bigger. Bigger, so it is bigger than. Over. What's the opposite of under? Over, right? Above. Thank you. Okay. Is over. Is above. We also have another term, an extra term, that it exceeds. Exceeds means that it goes beyond something. It goes beyond a value. Okay? Exceeds. So like I said, this is very terminology heavy. Very terminology heavy. Okay? When we talk about less than or equal to, the terms for less than or equal to. 
is less than or equal to, obviously. But here's the ones that get very confusing. Less than or equal to can also be said is at most. So think about it when you guys go on an elevator. How many of you have ever been on an elevator? Okay, on the elevator, it has a weight limit. At most, 600 pounds on this elevator. Or at most, you know, two tons on this tractor. You know, they have weight limits. At most means that that's the most you can put on there. You can't go above it. You can go equal to it, but you can't go above it. So that's why it's less than or equal to. At most means less than or equal to. It's the most that it can possibly be. You also have the term is no more than. So obviously if it is no more than, then it has to be the opposite, which is less than. Shh. But it could also be an equal. And then you have the term maximum. The maximum amount that you can achieve on this test is 100%. That means you can't go over 100, but you can't have below. <clears throat> you could also be equal. Okay, with the term greater than or less, less to, sorry, greater than or equal to. Is greater than or equal to we have the term is at least. You must be at least this height in order to be able to ride the rides. So when you go to the fair, they always have that height limit. Is at least this height means that you can be this height or taller. If you are under that height, you cannot get on that ride. Is no less than. If it's no less than, then it means it has to be equal to or greater. And then the term minimum. <coughs> so these vocabularies, this is very, very heavy vocabulary section. What we're going to do today, after we're done with our notes, we're going to do a gim kit that is just basically almost like flashcards. It's just drilling that vocabulary into you where it's going to be giving you a phrase is at least and you have to connect it to the correct symbol. Okay, is at most, is bigger than, exceeds, is below. You have to connect those to the correct symbol and then you'll have to also connect correct graphing material. When we come back from lunch, we're going to talk about how to properly graph and then we'll do the GIM kit. Okay, let's go ahead and continue on for here. When we're talking about graphing, the following inequality symbols are used to graph with an open circle, meaning that you just draw a circle, you don't fill it in. If it has the equal sign underneath it, so less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, then when you graph your circle, you fill the circle in, you close it, okay? Having an open circle means you start there, but you don't include the value. When you close the circle, it means not only do you start at that value, but you also include it. And it's really important to remember that when you are graphing, your variable must be on the left side. When you are graphing, you want your variable on the left side of your inequality. So for example, if you've got four is greater than X, then you're going to go ahead and rewrite you're going to rewrite by flipping the entire statement. You're going to rewrite it by flipping the entire statement. This would become x is less than 4. So the symbol has to flip because right now if 4 is supposed to be greater than x, then that means x has to be less than 4. You always want to rewrite your inequalities so that your variable's on the left side. It makes it that much easier when you have to graph your inequality. Because when you graph the inequality, the arrow, the arrow is pointing in the direction that you're going to graph. So right now, what direction is my arrow pointing towards? Is it pointing towards the left or pointing towards the right? 
to the left. It's pointing towards the left. It's pointing, the point is facing towards the left. So that means when you graph it, you would be graphing in the direction towards the left. So let's take a look at these problems. <coughs> For problem number one, it says x is greater than one, boys. x is greater than one. So greater than, the symbol greater than, is that an open or closed circle? Open, right? If we look back at our statements, less than and greater than, no equal signs underneath it. Those are going to be open circles. Those are going to be open circles. Where's your key? Where's your key? Then give me the phone. I'll lock it up for you. Okay, this is going to be an open circle. So starting at the value 1, you're going to draw an open circle. Now, is it going to go to the left, which is over here, or are we going to go to the right, which is over here? Right. To the right. The arrow is pointing to the right. It's an open circle, and it's going to be graphed to the right. So starting at 1, you put an open circle, and then you draw your graph going in the direction towards the right. For problem number 2, problem number 2, we have to rewrite it. We have to rewrite it because the x is not on the left side. So we're going to rewrite the entire statement. So instead of negative 2 is greater than or equal to x, we're going to put the x on the left side. We're going to put the negative 2 on the right side. And the inequality is going to flip. It's going to become less than or equal to. <coughs> less than or equal to. Now, the symbol less than or equal to, is it an open or closed circle? Closed. If it has that extra line underneath the symbol, then that means you're going to fill your circle in. That is a closed circle. So starting at negative 2, we're going to draw a circle and we're going to close it, fill it in. Now, the arrow, is the arrow pointing to the left or to the right? To the left. This is the left side, so we're going to draw our arrow going to the left. Okay, I want you to try problem 3 and problem 4 on your own. Problem 3 and 4 are going to be on your own. Alright, so for problem number 3, what's the first thing that we need to do? Rewrite. We need to rewrite this first before we can start actually graphing anything. It's going to be x, then you're going to flip the inequality. The inequality is now going to be greater than or equal to, and then a positive 5. Is that open or closed circle? closed. This is going to be a closed circle, and is it going to go to the left or to the right? To the right. Okay, the direction that it is pointing is pointing towards the right. So we're going to start at a positive 5. We're going to close or fill in the circle, and then we're going to draw our line going towards the right. Okay, what this means is that every value starting at 5 and up is a possible solution to this inequality. Okay, 5 is greater than or equal to 5. 6 is greater than or equal to 5. 7 is greater than or equal to 5. So those are solutions. It's not the same as an equation. An equation is a single value that it can be equal to. An equality is a range of values. <clears throat> for problem number 4, do we need to rewrite number 4? No, it's already in X on the left side. Is this open or closed circle? open, right? It has no equal sign underneath it, so it's an open circle. Are we going to graph it to the left? So is it pointing to the left or is it pointing to the right? Okay. To the left. Okay, it's pointing to the left. So starting at 4.5, okay, 4.5, which is halfway between 4 and 5, 4.5, we're going to have an open circle and we're going to graph it to the left. And there's our solution. Okay, for problems 5, 6, and 7, we are just writing the inequality. So the inequality is always going to be x, and then is it an open or closed circle? It's open, and it's going to the right. 
open and to the right is a greater than symbol. Look at the arrow that's created. The arrow looks like a greater than symbol. Okay, and since it's not filled in, we don't have any an equal sign underneath it. And what number did it start at? What number did it start at? It starts at negative one. So X is greater than negative one. <clears throat> okay, same thing for here. We're gonna put X, okay? It's going in the lesser direction. It's going in the less than direction. Is it less than or less than or equal to? Less than or equal to, right? It's filled in. Since it's filled in, it's gotta have that equal to sign. And what number did it start at? Look at your graph. What number does it start at, guys? A two. So it's X is less than or equal to two. Problem seven. Is this a less than or greater than symbol? Look at the arrow. Is it a less than or greater than symbol? Less than. This is a less than symbol. So X is less than. Is it going to be equal to or not? It's not, right? It's not filled in, so it's not equal to, so it's just the less than, and where is it starting at? It starts at seven. These are very simple, basic things. You just have to remember, it's important that you remember, these symbols are open, these symbols are closed. Open and closed means a difference for how you graph them.